chemical energy. And yes, chemical energy uh, is energy in compounds as released by reactions. All right. Electrical energy is uh, energy due to moving charges. Yeah, I should probably want my lines a little bit thicker. Uh, so yeah, is energy due to a moving charge. Thermal energy is the energy of moving particles. It's what makes things feel hot to the touch. And then light energy is energy from photons, which have no mass, which is kind of weird to think about, but that's what they do. And then potential energy is just energy that is stored uh, due to an object's height, although there are different forms of potential energy, but we haven't learned that yet. And then kinetic energy is energy from motion. So like think about like when you're running or when like when a machine is doing uh, you know motion or work. And then sound energy is energy from the vibrating of air molecules, all right, which our brain translates into sound. So very good, everyone. Let's move forward here and just mention that a couple of disclaimers as always. Please do not share any personal information during class. Your participation is vital, and these Connect sessions are always recorded for learning purposes. All right, we're right smack in the middle on Wednesday here. Tomorrow is going to be a recording, and then finishing off Friday with one last lesson. So we're almost done there. The weekend's right on the horizon. Uh, today we're going to learn how to calculate potential and kinetic energy. Uh, rather than just uh, talking about them conceptually, we're going to be doing some math today. So uh, specifically, we will be able to define and calculate potential energy based on height uh, and define and calculate kinetic energy based on speed. And then hopefully by the end of our notes, we should be proficient at doing just this. The links are in the chat at the bottom there. Either use the Larkin link or the Bengal link. Um, if none of them work, uh, just go to your grades tab if uh, all else fails. Please raise your hands when you have your notes open so we can move forward. All right, everyone. So here's what I want to know. If I wanted to design a roller coaster so that it goes faster at the bottom of its starting hill, what would I need to do to the height of the hill? Tell me in the chat. Should I keep the height of the hill the same or increase it or decrease it? Should it go higher? Should it go lower? Go ahead and tell me in the chat. There we go. There we go. I see Angelina, Mallory, Caden, Cody participating. Let's get some more people in the chat. Chantel, Jaime, Kai, Benjamin, think about this. If we want our roller coaster to go faster, what do we need to do the height of that starting hill? Yeah, exactly. We need it to be higher, right? So we need that. Oops, here we go. Starting hill. Starting hill needs to be higher. So what this is showing us, all right, is that the um, the energy at the top of our hill is related to the energy at the bottom of our hill. Remind me again, what's that energy at the top of the hill called? When you have a lot of height but no speed, where you're waiting to drop, right? Tell me in the chat box, what type of energy is that? It starts with the letter P. Yeah, exactly. This is our potential energy. Remember that potential energy is the potential to fall, right? The energy you have, the potential you have to begin falling. So that energy at the height, our potential energy at the height, is then related to the fact that as we increase that potential energy, once we get to the bottom and it turns into the energy related to motion, those things are related. Tell me in the chat, what is the energy called that's related to motion? It starts with the letter K. Yes, this is our kinetic energy. So again, as we increase our potential energy at the top, it's gonna actually increase our kinetic energy and our speed at the bottom. They are related to each other. Smiley faces, emojis, if that's beginning to make sense. Potential energy, kinetic energy are related to each other. Excellent, excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into here. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, how to solve for potential energy. So there's actually a, an equation for this. So again, potential energy is our stored energy, the energy we have stored, the ability to begin falling. The equation for potential energy, specifically gravitational potential energy, there are other types of potential energy or stored energy, but when we talk about objects and height, that's based on gravity. That's the stored energy due to gravity. So the equation for gravitational potential energy is based on the height of the object, which makes sense because we said potential energy increases with height. So here's the equation. 
the equation is potential energy, EP, equals mass times gravity times height. So mass here is measured in kilograms, gravity is measured in meters per second squared, and height is measured in meters. Please note that normally gravity is negative when we talk about forces because gravity has a direction when we talk about forces. When we talk about potential energy though, we're, we're just gonna leave it positive because we're just asking for the total amount of energy, which wouldn't be negative, all right? And then here, the potential energy is measured in joules. Go ahead and give me a green check, orange X, if that's beginning to make sense. All right, we have an equation. We already know the units for mass. We already know the units for gravity, meters per second squared, and the units for height is a distance, that's meters. So the only new one is possibly joules here. All right, so let's go ahead and actually try using this. We're gonna do a couple practice problems together, then you have one that you need to do on your own. We'll do the same exact thing with kinetic energy. So lots of calculations today. Please make sure you either have a phone calculator out, you have a computer calculator out, or you Google the word calculator and a calculator will pop up. So the question is, what is the potential energy of a four kilogram cannonball that is on a 10 meter high platform? Let's go ahead and annotate this here. So four kilograms, is that my energy, my mass, my gravity, or my height? Go ahead and tell me in the chat. Kilograms, take a look at our chart here, is kilograms related to mass, gravity, height, or energy? I think I see Angelina in the chat. Yeah, kilograms is the unit for mass. So that's going to eventually get plugged in for mass. And it's on a 10 meter high platform. Meters is the unit for what? Meters is the unit for what? Again, take a look at our chart if you need help. All right, we're now taking a look at meters. So what is meters related to? Thank you, Angelina. Yes, it's related to height. So this right here is going to be our height. All right, so let's go ahead and start plugging things in here. All right, so what number should I plug in for M? Based on what we just annotated, tell me in the chat, what number do I plug in for M? M stands for mass. We just annotated the mass. What number goes here? Yeah, the number four, perfect. And what number goes in for H, for our height? Based on what we just annotated. Thank you, Mallory. I see Angelina in the chat. Excellent, Cody. Thank you, Jaime. Yes, this is going to be 10 meters, beautiful. And now this one, again, we didn't have gravity explicitly stated in our problem, but you should know the number for gravity. What is the number for gravity? Again, if you need help, just take a look at our chart. This is a number that you should have memorized by the time you're done with our class. This is a number that we use a lot. Yeah, exactly. So the gravity, gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. It's always going to be 9.8, right? So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 9.8. Grab your calculators, multiply those three numbers together, 4 times 9.8 times 10, and tell me in the chat what do you get. Don't forget your units should be joules. So don't forget your units should be joules. All right, looking good, everybody. Seeing lots of answers here. All right, let me go ahead and show this to you, what this looks like up on the board. So we have 4 times 9.8 times 10. Going to go ahead and share this with you. All right, so 4 times, oops, sorry, 4 times 9.8 times 10. And you should, oops, sorry, times 10. 4 times 9.8 times 10. And you should be getting 392, which I see lots of people put that in the chat. So absolutely correct answer here is 392. Units should be placed as just J. Do not type out the word joules, only the letter J for your answer to number one. So in the first box, first box you put 392, second box you put J. Go ahead and raise your hands when you have number one saved. Go, 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 and raise your hands. Let's practice uh, this calculation a little bit more. Uh, let's annotate this first. So reading, it says, what is the potential energy of a eight, 80 kilogram boulder that is sitting on top of a 20, uh, 250 meter hill. So let's annotate this a little bit. Which part of this is going to be our mass? Let's have some people in the chat answer that. What part is going to be our mass? All right, it's going to be 80. So this is going to be our mass right here is the 80 kilogram boulder, goes right there. And then for the 250 meter hill, is that going to be G or H? 250 meters, is that height or gravity? Exactly, that's going to be height. So 250 meter heels, that's gonna be our height. And gravity is always what? What number do we use for gravity? 
or the acceleration due to gravity. Exactly. It is 9.8. So we will put 9.8 here. 80, gram, 80 kilograms is our mass. 250 meters is our height. So let's multiply that together. Angelina, I love the quick response. Uh, Erica, awesome. You forgot a zero there, but I totally understand uh, what your answer is. So this is going to be 196,000. 196,000 joules. Don't uh, please make sure that your first blank is the number and your second blank is the units, I believe, right? So go ahead and write that for number three in your notes. Raise your hands when you're ready to move on. All right, so this one, we're gonna go ahead and annotate this one together, but you do need to complete the rest on your own. So the question is, what is the potential energy of a six kilogram toy helicopter that is flying at 12 meters high, right? So we need to take a look here. Uh, six kilograms, is that my mass, my gravity, or my height? Six kilograms, is that my mass, my gravity, or my height? Exactly, kilograms is our mass, excellent. All right, um, and then taking a look here, what is meters, 12 meters? Where is that going to get plugged in? Is that our gravity or our height? Gravity or our height. Thank you, Angelina. Thank you, Shana. Yes, exactly. This is going to be our height, All right? So you should know what to plug in for mass. You should know what to plug in for height. And let's not forget, what do we always plug in for G, for gravity? What is gravity? Yeah, so we would be plugging in right here for gravity, 9.8. Again, you should be able to plug in the mass and height yourself. Make sure all those get multiplied together. All right, um, please include any decimal places in your answer. And don't forget the unit should just be J. Unit should just be J. First box is the number, second box is the capital letter J. Go ahead and get that done. You have 30 seconds to work on that. If you need more help, we are in the Q&A box, Q&A box. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and learn how to calculate kinetic energy. Remember the energy that an object has when it is in motion. So the equation for kinetic energy, again, because kinetic energy is based on motion, the equation for it is based on the velocity or the motion of the object. So the equation here is kinetic energy equals one half times mass times velocity squared. So this time we don't have gravity involved, we don't have height involved, it's only mass and velocity. Um, <clears throat> taking a look here, you can see again, kinetic energy or EK is still measured in joules, it's still a type of energy, so it's still joules or J. Mass is still measured in kilograms, and don't forget velocity is measured in meters per second. Now this one's a little bit trickier because we do have a fraction that we need to kind of turn into a decimal, and we also have a squaring, squaring going on. So we'll talk about what that looks like in just a moment, but as always, I think it's easier if we actually practice it together. Question is, what is the kinetic energy of a 1,860 kilogram Jeep that is driving at 22 meters per second? In the chat box, 1,860 kilograms. Kilograms is my what? Is that my kinetic energy, EK, my mass, M, or my velocity, V? Again, taking a look at our chart here, we know kilograms is the unit for what? Thank you, I see Angelina, I see Joseph H. Mallory, thank you, Cody. Awesome, Kai. Yeah, this is our mass, perfect. And what about 22 meters per second? Is that energy or, or sorry, is that kinetic energy or velocity? Yes, exactly. Meters per second, you, see, you can see right here, is definitely our velocity. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start plugging those in. So in for my mass, I have, in for my mass, I have 1,860. All right, in for my velocity, I have 22. And to make our lives easier, I'm going to change this fraction to decimal form. Tell me in the chat, how do you write one half as a decimal? How do you write one half as a decimal? If you want to, you can do one divided by two in your calculator and that will tell you. So what is one divided by two or one half in a decimal? Thank you, I see Carlos in the chat. Yeah, so I'm gonna write this as 0 0.5. Again, that'll make our lives a lot easier. Smiley faces, emojis, if that makes sense. 0 0.5 is the same thing as one half, okay? just to make our lives easier when we plug it into our calculator. Okay, cool. Now, thinking back to the order of operations, PEMDAS, right, so P-E-M-D-A-S. All right, so when we think about PEMDAS, all right, we need to go ahead and do parentheses first, which we don't have parentheses, and then E stands for what? E stands for what? P stands for parentheses, we don't have any of those, but E does stand for what? Tell me in the chat. It stands for exponents, so we need to do exponents first. 
All right, and we do in fact have an exponent here. We have 22 squared right here. Now, when you have something that is squared, that means the number has to be multiplied by itself twice. So 22 squared is the same as saying 22 times 22. Grab your calculators and tell me in the chat, what is 22 times 22? Yeah, exactly, this is gonna be 484, okay? Everything else is gonna stay the same because we haven't simplified those yet. So I'm gonna still have 0 0.5 here and 1,860 here. And plugging that into your calculator now, now that we just have multiplication, now we can go ahead and move on to the M part of PEMDAS. Now that we just have multiplication, go ahead and solve that. Yeah, so if we press enter here, you should be getting 450,120. So jumping back over here, let me go ahead and fill that in for us. And don't forget units are J for joules. So our correct answer here should be 450,120 in the first box and J in the second box. Go ahead and raise your hands once you have this saved. Here's our first box, here's our second box. And you have 20 seconds to get that done. Go, go, go. But let's annotate this first uh, while reading it. So it says, what is the kinetic energy of a 4,300 kilogram roller coaster that is moving at 29 meters per second. So of the variables that we need, right, for kinetic energy, we need mass and velocity. So first, what is our mass in this question? What is our mass? Perfect, Angelina. Can I get a couple more responses? Couple more responses in the chat. Kilograms. Now, what is my velocity? So what is my V? Exactly, it is 29 meters per second. So 29 meters per second. Uh, and then don't forget we have that one half over here. Yeah, one half can be written as 0.5. Uh, let's first square 29 to calculate this. So when we square 29, what is 29 squared? Angelina is always the quickest, but can anyone else tell me in the chat, what is 29 squared? If you don't have the square function on calculator, you can just go 29 times 29. So yeah, it is 841. Now that's still 4,300 right there. Five. So now our final answer is going to be 841 times 4,300 and then times 0.5. And we should get a very, very large number. It is 1,808,150 joules. Go ahead and put that into your answer for number six. And then we will move on after everyone has raised their hands. All right, let's go ahead. And again, this was one that you need to do on your own, but we'll go ahead and at least annotate together. So the question is, what is the kinetic energy of a five kilogram bowling ball that is moving down the lane at seven meters per second? Five kilograms, tell me in the chat, is that our mass or our velocity? Five kilograms, is that our mass or our velocity? Angelina got that in there before I even finished my sentence. Oh my goodness. Tell me in the chat, everyone. Thank you, Kaden. Let's get, thank you, Cody. Thank you, Chantel. Awesome. Uh, let's get Shayna in the chat. Thank you, Lexi. Excellent. Let's get Noah and Benjamin and Joseph H. in the chat. Five kilograms is our what? Is our what? Thank you, Shayna. Yeah, this is our mass. Perfect. And um, velocity here, right? Velocity is, is our seven meters per second, right? So that's going to get plugged in right here. Don't forget again, how do I rewrite one half? How do I rewrite one half to make our lives easier? Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and rewrite it as 0 0.5. Now don't forget you do need to do this squared part first, right? So don't forget that another way to do seven squared on a calculator is just seven times seven. So make sure you plug in what that seven times seven is underneath and then multiply what you have, the rest of it, multiply it all together. All right, so that's what you're gonna work on. Number goes in the first box. Again, this is actually question number seven and J goes in the second box. Go ahead and raise your hands when you're ready. If you wanna check your answers, we are in the Q and A area. Don't forget, please include any decimals. Please include any decimals. Calculated the potential energy based on height and did the same thing for kinetic energy based on speed. All right, as you can see, it's pretty simple. It just takes a little bit of arithmetic, but uh, we managed to survive. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, say that if you haven't submitted your notes already, please uh, do so at this point. Um, 
if you need to go back to view any questions, please let us know. But I know you guys are really wanting to go to lunch right now. So if you have no further questions, feel free to go have your lunch. And we will see you guys on Friday.